Pokemon is the most popular media franchise in the world with a sizable video game history. And as a result, they've released games in a wide variety of genres over the series lifetime. But I feel like the rate at which side series games and spin-offs are released has really stalled over the past few years. If you look at what we've had in the past five years, we've gotten Pokemon Cafe Remix for mobile and Switch, Pokemon Quest for mobile and Switch, Pokemon Tournament DX for Switch, Pokemon Unite for mobile and Switch, New Pokemon Snap for Switch, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX for Switch, Pokemon Smile for mobile, Pokemon Rumble Rush for mobile, Pokemon Wave Hello for mobile, Pokemon Masters EX for mobile, and Detective Pikachu for 3DS. Now that sounds like a lot of games, but if we break it down, the lineup gets a bit more depressing. Two free-to-play mobile games that have been thrown onto the Switch and are full of microtransactions, four solely mobile games consisting of an app to encourage children to brush the teeth, a gacha game designed to entice players into buying in-game coins with real money, an online-only game in the Rumble series that got taken offline barely a year after it released, and an app where Pokemon wave at you. Then we also have a MOBA containing an avalanche of microtransactions where paying for items makes you actively better than most players who don't, a part of a Wii U fighting game with a few extra characters, a remake of the original Mystery Dungeon games that released on DS and Game Boy Advance, a sequel to Pokemon Snap that released on the N64, and a pretty linear story game for the 3DS in Detective Pikachu. Out of that entire list, I've played Pokken, New Pokemon Snap, Detective Pikachu, and a bit of Unite, Quest, and Cafe Remix. I enjoyed Pokken, New Snap, and Detective Pikachu. Everything else I played was pretty average in my opinion. And it's disappointing because I remember how good and varied spin-offs from previous generations have been. I miss the days of getting games like Pokemon Ranger and Pokemon Conquest. Even dumb stuff like Pokemon Typing Adventure was funny to get. So I wanted to use this as an opportunity to bring up some potential spin-off titles that I'd really like to see on the Switch. Quick disclaimer, all of these pitches are just dumb ideas I've had over the years, don't take them super seriously, that just takes all the fun out of it. Most Pokemon are pretty much breathing weapons with a ton of crazy feats and abilities. From snails as hot as the sun, to vibrating toads, there's a wide variety of ways that these war machines could kill the entire human race. Since they're used as tools for fighting and making money, I've always thought that a cool spin-off Pokemon game would be a tower defense style game. Almost every person who makes videos about Pokemon at some point has made a video about the top 10 weird or disturbing Pokedex entries. And because I've watched way too many of them, I know way too much about the lore of the Pokemon universe. But on the plus side, this information has given me so many ideas about how certain Pokemon could be used in a tower defense game. Considering the fact that there are over 900 Pokemon, there are a ton of creative ways that they could be implemented in a tower defense game. You could have Ferrothorn shooting metal spikes while clinging to the ceiling, Gastrodon could secrete slime to slow down enemies and make them more vulnerable, Carcol could roll around the field and cover it in coal to inflict burn damage, and you could have Pokemon like Toxapex and Probopass acting as physical barriers that the enemy has to break through. Just imagine getting a really high score and using a Dragapult to call in an artillery strike. I've always thought this idea had a ton of potential and I hope that it's explored in the future. Back in 2016, we found out that Pokemon Sun and Moon wouldn't feature any gyms. Instead, you'd go through island trials before challenging the Pokemon League. It was a nice change of pace from the formula of fight 8 gym leaders, now fight the League. Every trial was pretty different, but the one that stood out to me most was the Ghost Trial. It had you walking through an abandoned supermarket that was haunted by Ghost Pokemon. You'd then use the Pokefinder to take pictures of them and battle them. I thought the Pokefinder was a really cool addition to Sun and Moon and a nice little callback to Pokemon Snap on the N64 but I didn't think anything else of it until we got new Pokemon Snap in 2021. And this game was real good. The environments were varied and the sheer amount of Pokemon you could find was pretty impressive. And once again, the main level that stuck out to me was Out Away Cave, with Pokemon like Gengar, Drifloon, Pumpkaboo and Sableye. This got me thinking about a ghost hunting Pokemon game, similar to Phasmophobia. Obviously, since Pokemon is first and foremost a franchise for children, it wouldn't get to the point where some people, totally not me, play the game with Mario music on in the background to distract from the spooky shit going on. I think it would be a really cool concept. You're contracted by different people to deal with stuff that could be considered spooky. Considering the amount of ghost Pokemon we have now, there's a whole lot that could be done with this premise. People in a village are experiencing wild mood swings, going from having headaches and hallucinating to being happy, all due to a nearby Miss Magius tormenting the village. People are losing their valuable jewellery and anything shiny because they're being hoarded by a nearby Sableye. Employees working in an office building are becoming drowsy and even fainting while at work because there's a ghastly living in the air conditioner. At the end of the game, you could even be called on to hunt a larger threat like Unbound Hooper or Giratina threatening the whole world or something. Or if people are tired of single player only games, 
jump straight into the Phasmophobia comparisons and give it online multiplayer where you and your friends can team up to hunt ghost Pokemon in online levels. I feel like there's a lot of untapped potential here. I guess gym battles and contests pretty much constitute sport within the Pokemon world, and there have been sports minigames before like the Pokathlon in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But I think that something similar to Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games could be pretty good. The main inspiration for this idea comes from the opening of the Zorok movie, where they show some kind of sport being played by an Elekid and Beldum evolutionary line. I always thought something like this could be really cool in the games, or maybe even take it further. Have a ton of real life sports with a Pokemon twist and they all have different Pokemon that would be suited for them like an MMA competition for fighting types. I want to see just how a phalanx would take on a Hitmontop in the octagon. It would be like spinning a Beyblade into a game of marbles. You could do water sports for water types, have people racing on them and they all have different stats or abilities so that they all play kind of differently. Maybe a Buizel is faster than a Polyrath, but Polyrath is stronger so it can destroy obstacles and jump higher. One of the anime episodes that always stuck with me was when Ash was entered into some kind of Pokemon Sumo tournament and he had to use his Snorlax to win against a Feraligator. Considering how many Pokemon have been introduced since then, there are a ton of options available for this roster. Stuff like Swallow, Rhyperia, Agron and Beware would be really cool to see here. If this idea isn't as good as I think it is, then fuck it. Just release a collection of remade minigames from the series past like the Stadium minigames in the Pokeathlon. In the lead up to Pokemon Sword and Shield's release, it was revealed that the games wouldn't support every Pokemon. This was different to Sun and Moon, as even though those games didn't have a national dex, you could still transfer every Pokemon into the games and use them. But this wasn't the case for Sword and Shield. The files for a large number of Pokemon just weren't in the game and they couldn't be transferred from Pokemon Home. This started the Bring Back the National Dex movement. Let me just say, I'm not in favour of the dex cut. But at the same time, the sheer amount of toxicity from people online made me hate the community. People were posting shit like this under every single tweet from the official Pokemon account as though it was going to do something. It made me feel embarrassed to be part of the community. Now that the National Dex fiasco has been explained, another idea I've had is a game that's strictly used for ranked games in VGC. It would be in a similar format to the Pokemon Stadium games for the N64 and Battle Revolution for the Wii. Have it support every Pokemon in existence and have rank splits or seasons. Each season there's a new list of Pokemon that are eligible to be used for that season. Similar to how Yu-Gi-Oh! releases new ban lists that change the usability of cards for official tournaments. Fair enough, maybe throw in a short story mode or something to add a bit more substance to the game, but have the main focus of the game be on battling. Who needs a story when you can throw hands? Give it full home compatibility so that people can start their ranked teams in the game and you don't need a way to catch every single Pokemon in this game. That way people get a game that supports every single Pokemon like they've wanted, and Game Freak doesn't have to include the National Dex in every new game, meaning that they'd have more room to innovate with future games. In an interview with Game Informer, Junichi Masuda said, Going forward, thinking about the future of Pokemon, we want to prioritise all those new gameplay ideas, new ways to enjoy the game, and want to challenge ourselves at Game Freak to create new ways to enjoy that game. That's what really drove the decision for this new direction. Considering how good Legends Arceus was, I'd say that Game Freak's decision was definitely a step in the right direction. This new game would just need updating every year or so to include the new Pokemon, items, abilities and moves introduced with the new mainline games. It would make it much easier to set up official tournaments, and there would be a more consistent format for people to play competitive Pokemon. Considering how good the music has been throughout the series, I'm surprised that Pokemon hasn't done a rhythm game yet. Sure, there are a few songs available as DLC in one of the Taiko no Tatsujin games, but there hasn't been a Pokemon rhythm game since Pokemon Say Tap on mobile devices and desktops in 2011. I mean, there was Pokemon Roll Call Rhythm Game, released in 2019, available through the official Hong Kong and Taiwan Pokemon website, but there hasn't been anything on consoles. I mean, the Switch is one of the best selling consoles of all time, and there are 25 years worth of games and 25 seasons worth of anime to pull songs from. How has this not been done yet? I'm not a fan of having an egregious amount of DLC for a game, but I think it would make sense in this case. Have a lot of really iconic songs from all of the franchise included in the base game to appeal to as many people as possible, and then offer song packs with specific themes as paid DLC. They could offer a number of DLC packs, like each era of mainline games split by console or generation, like having songs from generation 1 and 2 for the Game Boy era pack, having stuff from generation 3 in the advanced era pack and so on, one or two packs for all the anime openings and main themes. Maybe they could do a couple of spin-off packs to cover games like Mystery Dungeon and Ranger Games, Pokemon Conquest, maybe some of the apps, and games like Colosseum and XD Gale of Darkness. And if you don't want to go with the traditional rhythm game format, they could do something similar to the collaboration between the Zelda series and the Crypt of the Necrodancer developers. Or even get them to do it. I'm sure it will go really well. I bet you could even add in some kind of gimmicky controller and people will pay extra for it.
I mean, it's been done before, and Pokemon fans would probably pay a premium for a plank of plywood if there was a Gengar on it. I'm not claiming to know everything about game design, that's not the purpose of this video. I just wanted to throw some ideas out there about the potential spin-off games I've always thought would be cool to see as someone who's been playing these games for years. I don't know if half of these ideas would sell well or even be viable in the first place, but I just think it's fun to think about stuff like this from time to time. Also, one final note, please bring back Ranger and Pinball.